Many things have been happening in this world, both good and bad, that are changing the course of human history. First of all, I'd like to discuss the Vegas shooting and my suspicions on this topic. The official narrative being put out by the Sheriff's Department as well as FBI has been changed at least three times, and so far, all three times have been far from what forensic analysts and other experts have proven that happened that night. First off, you have the Soros Foundation buying up a $42.2 million put option weeks before the shooting on MGM International, which is the parent company of Mandalay Bay. For those of you who don't know what a put option is, it's basically a bet against the company's stock in the next quarter. If you want to check this out for yourself, go to the sec.gov website and look for this link. Next, you have an anonymous 4chan user that's going by the name John who predicted this very incident on September 10th, but originally thought that they would pull it off on the anniversary of 9-11. So basically, a slash POL politically incorrect message board was set up on 4chan. And the title is, if anything happens tomorrow, it's Mossad, which is the CIA of Israel. False flag level alpha. Now you have these people who are joking about, you know, F Israel, it's going to be a North Korean false flag. It's basically all jokes in the UN, posting memes and things like that. And then this John person comes in with the anonymous ID of L-A-B-N-F-E-T-V. And as you can see, the timestamp is Sunday, 10th of September, 2017. He says, look, I feel bad for some of you on this website, so I'll let you in on a little secret. If you live in Las Vegas or Henderson, stay inside tomorrow. Don't go anywhere where there are large groups of people. Also, if you see three black vans parked next to each other, immediately leave the area. You're welcome. Signed, John. And John comes back in and says, to clarify... I won't be doing anything to harm anyone. I'm not a killer, and I never ever will be one. Signed, John. And then you have him come in again and say it's called the, quote, High Incident Project. They want to make the American public think that places with extremely high security aren't safe. They are trying to create more regulations. You will see law proposed within the next few years to put up metal detectors and other security devices. Media and politicians will be saying places with lots of police need even more police. I can't guarantee anything will happen tomorrow, but Las Vegas is on their minds. Signed, John. And John comes back one more time in this message board and says, If their plan is successful, State of Nevada will pass a law in the future making all casinos have a mandatory metal detectors and backscatter machines. Soon after, a federal law will be passed to put these machines in universities, high schools, federal buildings, you name it. OSI Systems and Shertoff are the main producers of these machines. Sometime around 2020, Shertoff and OSI will merge into a single company. After they merge, the owners will sell off all their stock and make billions in profit. Mr. Shertoff has been in contact with Sheldon Adelson. Mr. Adelson will become a huge sponsor of these machines, and he will be the first to put them in his casino when the law passes. This is my last message for now. Don't expect me to return anytime soon. Signed, John. So we really don't know who this John guy is, and we don't know who his connections is, but they must be pretty high up, because he was dead on besides the date. And I'm sure if the CIA or the FBI could trace him and track him down he's probably in jail already but I digress so there's a lot of suspicions I don't know exactly what happened that night but I can tell you that the official narrative is mostly inaccurate so now let's move on to the JFK files recently released by the Trump administration now we've learned a lot from these files but I want to point you to three documents that I find the most interesting actually so First off, the FBI warned the Dallas police of the committee that was organized to kill Oswald. So basically, in a memo that was written two days after the assassination, the FBI director at the time, J. Edgar Hoover, wrote that his bureau warned Dallas police at least twice since Kennedy's killing of threats against Oswald. 
He said, quote, last night we received a call in our Dallas office from a man talking in a calm voice and saying he was a member of a committee organized to kill Oswald, Hoover wrote. We at once notified the chief of police and he assured us Oswald would be given sufficient protection. This morning we called the chief of police again, warning of the possibility of some effort against Oswald. And again, he assured us adequate protection would be given. However, this was not done. And as we know, Oswald was shot by Ruby in police headquarters on live television, I might add. So that's one piece of damning information. Uh, the next one I want to point to is the CIA monitoring Oswald months prior to the assassination. So basically, in a cable sent the day after the assassination revealed that the CIA had been monitoring Oswald two months earlier when he was in Mexico on September 28th of 1963. This phone tap uh, basically was listening in on Oswald, who was a former Marine who we know defected to the Soviet Union and even married a Russian woman. So he dialed a Soviet embassy from the Cuban consulate in Mexico City. And despite his very terrible Russian, he refused to speak English. So it says, quote, please speak Russian, Oswald pleaded when the Soviet officials answered him in his own language. So... Basically, the CIA's translator in Mexico City noted that the uh, North American, as he called him, spoke terrible, hardly recognizable Russian. So my question is, the CIA was already tapping Oswald and following Oswald. So how did this incident even occur if he was under such surveillance? Even at that time, it seems absurd. So that's the question I have on that topic. And now I want to take you to the most damning information that I found in all of these files. So basically, we still don't know who really killed him, JFK. Because if you actually look at this document ID 32113033, you see that under the comments it says... Selected pages from longer disposition. The response begun on the last page is incomplete. Declassification marking may be for special access only. So scroll down all the way to the end. And this is basically this whole entire document is a a memo, actually a deposition given to the uh, before the Presidential Commission on the CIA Activities in 1975 by Richard Helms, who had served as the agency's director. Uh, after a discussion of Vietnam, David Bellin, an attorney for the commission, turned to whether the CIA was involved in Kennedy's killing. So let's go ahead and read from the document. The last question is, Mr. Bellin says, is there any information involved with the assassination of President Kennedy which in any way show that Lee Harvey Oswald was in some way a CIA agent or agent? And from there, the document is cut off. I looked for it and it's still classified. That last page, that last answer, that last page of this document is still classified. So we still don't know the true answer which is very damning to them because why would you hide that answer? You only do that if you have something to hide. So this raises a lot of suspicion. Uh, I already had a lot of suspicion about the JFK murder because I know there was multiple shooters that came from different angles. Forensic analysts have proven that. He was hit at least three times. Uh, go watch the Zapruder film. Uh, unedited and you will see frame by frame that he was shot at least twice some say three times so I know Oswald was not the sole killer I know there was more than likely more than Oswald and I know that Oswald was killed before he could testify or go to a hearing because I'm sure he had a lot to say maybe about the CIA or the FBI who knows but my point is, there's a lot of suspicion, and I'm glad Trump released these documents because now we have solid evidence that they are still covering up the most sensitive information on the JFK assassination. Thank you all for listening. Stay safe this weekend. I know Antifa and the far-left groups are planning riots until the Trump administration is overthrown in their own words. So, everybody please be safe. Watch your six. Protect yourself. Protect your family. 
We may be going through some really tough times in the near future, but I promise you America will come out on top. George Washington even envisioned this. Go look up George Washington's vision, and you will see that this has already been written, and we know that there's a final great war between good and evil, and I know that God's people as well as God's country, which is America, even though we have so many problems, we are still one nation under God. So please just watch yourself, pray to God, find your salvation, and be a good person. Thank you for listening, and God bless.